The Olympus Trip 35. This little camera was introduced in 1967 and it sold millions all the way up until 1984. Photographers such as David Bailey endorsed it. David Bailey? Who's he? The Olympus Trip. So simple, anyone can use it. And even today, you can pick up this little thing at many shops. Today, I'm going to be showing you why this might be your first step into film photography. Before I tell you about the camera though, this video is sponsored by Cameras by Max. I graduated with Max and they now run an independent camera store through their Depop. All of their cameras are tested to make sure they're fully functional and ready for you to shoot. They're also super friendly. So it doesn't matter if you've never picked up a camera before or you're ready for your next upgrade, drop a message anytime and they can help you out. Each camera you buy also comes with a little cheat sheet so it can answer all your commonly asked questions about how to load a film camera, what settings to use and set you on your way. Today, they sent me one of their custom Olympus trips. This one has a white trim. They also do loads of different custom colors or you can just get the original one if you like. Taking a look now at the camera, we can see it's got a really simple design. Film winder on the left, hot shoe for attaching a flash in the middle, right next to it's the shutter, and then you can see the counter here to know what shot you're on. Everything to control you taking the photo is here on the lens. At the base, you have your aperture. You only need to keep it in A for automatic, unless you have a flash attached. The more you shoot with a flash, you'll learn what aperture is best for what situation you're in, but most of the time, you can just whack in an F16 if you're taking photos of friends and it'll work great. Moving up, we have the focus. The trip uses zone focusing, so depending on how close or far away you are from the thing you're trying to photograph, you can switch to the different zones. We can see mountains for things that are very far away. We then have the icon of the three people if you're taking full body photos of friends. Then we have the two icons if you're doing any photos from the waist up of your friends. And then we have the single icon if you're taking a portrait. Right on top, you select your ISO or ASA for the film you're shooting. This goes all the way from 400 ISO right down to 25 ISO. And then that brings us right to the front of the lens where we have the coolest thing about this camera. These little glass bumps, they make it look like it's a ring flash, but it's actually what makes the camera solar powered. When you frame up a shot, it will automatically read all the light around you in the area and then determine the best settings to use. This also means that the camera doesn't need to be battery operated. You just need to make sure to either get a lens cap or keep it in its camera case in the dark when you're not shooting with it to not drain out the solar cell. Speaking of the lens, it's actually really sharp for what it is. I was really surprised by the details getting out of the lens on the first few rolls I shot with it. The lens is 40 millimeters, which means it's slightly wider than what your eye sees and the aperture can go all the way down to F 2.8. This means that it can get a lot more light in in low light situations. The user experience with this camera is really simple. You just pull your eye up to the viewfinder, and then in the bottom right, you can see your aperture that you have selected, but it should probably be at A for automatic. You then also see the little focus icons, so you can select either the portrait, two people, three people, or the mountains. So when you've got your aperture and your focus set, you just wind it and take your photo. The only thing you need to think about is if you're taking a portrait of somebody up close, make sure to move your camera a little bit down and to the right. This is because you're looking through the viewfinder here, not directly through the lens. So just keep it in mind when you're framing up shots. The little hot shoe on top means that you can attach any flash to it. It doesn't matter if it's a traditional one or a more modern one. Max sent me one of their little Olympus flashes that they sell in their shop. All you gotta do is slide it on and it's ready to shoot. These cameras are really durable and they will stand the test of time. Of course, I've got the one that Max sent me, but right here, this is my dad's from the 1970s and it still works. A couple of years ago, I just got it repaired and cleaned up and it was ready to shoot straight away. I'd recommend this camera to anybody who's looking to take their first step into film photography. If you enjoy taking photos with a small disposable camera, but you're looking to get something that's reusable with a much sharper lens, or maybe you're someone who doesn't want to carry around a big SLR camera or have to worry about knowing the exact settings for every shot you're about to take, you just want to pick up a camera, wind it and take the shot, then why don't you check out Cameras by Max? Head on over to their Instagram and check them out.